Hello everyone, Cilantro here. Wanted to talk to you guys uh, today about some alchemy in Skyrim. Now, if you've been watching my stream recently, you've probably seen me uh, play Skyrim quite a bit. I, uh, I've taken kind of a, uh, quite a liking to it recently. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to the next expansion uh, DLC coming out. Uh, but until then, wanted to uh, try to share some thoughts about the alchemy system. Now, when I first started doing it, I found it rather, uh, rather intimidating. Um, there's a lot of ingredients and um, very hard to kind of figure out on your own. There's some ways to do it, um, just through you know raw experimenting and such. But uh, ultimately, I ended up deciding to start look up looking up what ingredients did, and um, I'm kind of glad I did. Uh, it's one of those things that yeah, I could sit here for days and try to match up every ingredient to see how uh, see what what properties they have and and, and so on. But ultimately. Uh, you know, my time is uh, better spent uh, experimenting with the potions once I know uh, exactly how they work. Uh, so one of the things that I think a lot of people get confused about with alchemy is how you actually make potions. It's actually rather simple. Um, basically, any ingredients, every ingredient has four uh, properties to it. Uh, as you can see, like this uh, Mora Tapinella here has Restore Magicka, Regenerate Stamina, Lingering Damage Health, and Fortify, fortify Illusion. Um, all you have to do is uh, find two ingredients that share the same property and uh, combine them and you'll get a potion that uh, that, that does that effect. Um, and so uh, mixing the potions together becomes sort of, uh, you know, it's about finding what, po what potions work for you um, and which ingredients to use, which ones are the most sustainable. Uh, which ones are the easiest to get? Um, and which ones are most effective? Because some po some potion ingredients have um, uh, have higher magnitudes of effect for the effects that they actually give you. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, talk a little bit very quickly about how to level alchemy, and then I'm going to show off some potion ingredients that I like and some potions that I like. Um, and it's not an exhaustive list. If you guys have any suggestions for good potions, uh, I've probably missed a ton of them. Uh, that's what the uh, that's what the comments below are for. So feel free to uh, you know start a discussion there of some potion ideas that you have. Um, I'm not sure if any of the ingredients that are coming in the new uh, DLC are any good or not. Uh, it's you know left to be seen when that comes out when the uh, the Dragonborn DLC comes out for the uh, for the PC. Uh, so yeah, without further, any further ado, let's talk about leveling a little bit. Now this guide isn't intended to be fully about uh, leveling, but uh, obviously you need to get to higher levels if you want to take your alchemy more seriously. Uh, one thing I would definitely suggest, and let me just show you here on the uh, uh, the trees. Um, when you level, your leveling is uh, affected strictly by the value of the potion that you make. So the more valuable potions you make, the more uh, quickly you'll level. Um, and as potion ingredients do tend to get kind of expensive after a while, although you can make a good profit, um, if you want to take your alchemy seriously, I would definitely recommend um, maxing out Alchemist. Uh, make sure you grab Benefactor as well. 25% more uh, powerful potions of all kinds. Uh, and then Poisoner uh, as well if you intend on using poisons for 25% more. And then again, potions uh, right here, Physician, potions you mix that uh, restore... Uh, you know, these three stats are 25% more powerful. I would definitely recommend uh, picking up these, I mean, not only for your long-term use, but as you level, because it will make your leveling uh, so much uh, faster. Um, some of the perks are pretty good, especially Purity. This allows you to, this unlocks a few potion types that would otherwise have uh, negative effects or some poisons that would otherwise have positive effects that you wouldn't want. Um, so it's definitely pretty good. Um, Experimenter, this perk right here, um, when you eat ingredients, it will uh, show you what they do. Normally, if you just eat an ingredient, it'll show you what the first property is, but uh, further ranks in this will increase that to the second, third, and ultimately all four uh, stats. If you're kind of a purist and don't wish to look up what the ingredients do, um, no harm in doing this. I believe it may require Alchemy 100 or somewhere near it in order to uh, get all four ingredients shown. But, um, you know, if you want to do it, there's nothing wrong with it. I, I certainly wouldn't blame you. And uh, another one, this is kind of an optional one, uh, Green Thumb doubles the ingredients you get whenever you gather stuff. I, I think it's kind of nice. Um, ultimately, you know, ingredients um, 
a lot of them can be very, very hard to come by in large quantities. So you have to kind of watch out, you know, what you're spending and where you're getting it and such. Um, and another just general piece of advice is uh, if you are serious about alchemy, every time you go to a town, white run, wherever, buy out all the ingredients. Just buy them all. Um, because generally when you're leveling, you'll have so many valuable potions to sell. Just carry just a small handful of them. And uh, anytime you're in town, just sell all of them. Um, anywho, uh, getting back to talking about actually uh, leveling. Um, the most uh, expensive potions you can make are uh, ones that do damage magicka regen, uh, damage stamina regen. Both of those two uh, values are pretty expensive. Uh, invisibility is fairly expensive. Paralysis is definitely very expensive. And uh, I think slow is actually pretty expensive as well. So all the uh, sort of unique ones, maybe even water breathing, uh, fairly pricey. So if you find any ingredients that you like that uh, have those uh, properties, use those to level. Um, most people also know that the giant's toe ingredient, uh, in particular, for whatever reason, has a huge value multiplier whenever you use it for anything that does like fortify health or fortify carry weight. So, um, or even the two damage stamina uh, properties. So, you know, feel free to experiment with those and you'd be surprised uh, the value of potions you can make with giant's toes. Um, if you have the Hearthfire DLC and uh, you have a nice little garden like I do uh, out here and I'm overweight because I have a thousand pounds of ingredients on me. Um, if you have a nice uh, little garden there, um, Actually, what I found through a little bit of experiment and research, um, if you combine these three ingredients, and uh, again, all the potions uh, that I mentioned will be linked. Uh, I'll have a, a post on my website uh, detailing all the potions that I'm talking about here. Um, uh, Creep Cluster, uh, Mora Tapanella, and these all three ingredients of the, uh, all three of these ingredients can be grown. And Scaly Folo Foliota. That's how you pronounce it. Uh, makes you a nice potion to fortify carry weight. Now, if I if you don't have the purity uh, perk, which you can only get at 100 anyway, there's actually another property to this potion, uh, as far as I know. Um, and this is a very expensive potion that you can make from uh, stuff that you can grow in your own house. Um, so if you if you're purely interested in leveling as quickly as possible. Um, if you buy a house, if you have access to a house uh, that you can grow stuff in, plant those three plants. And uh, just, you know, crank those potions out. You'll make tons and tons and tons of them, I'm sure. But they will level you very quickly. Um, definitely make sure you get those perks in there as well. Um, that's, really about, that's really about it for leveling. About all I wanted to say. I didn't want to spend too much time on it. So uh, let's go into some, some useful potion types that I found. Okay, so there are two damage uh, potions, if you will, that I would find particularly useful. Um, the first one uh, is one that I've used on this particular character. Uh, offers up Fortify One Hand and Fortify Archery in the same uh, potion. And uh, Canis Root is the important ingredient here because it is the single ingredient that has both of those uh, properties. This is what you'd call like the, uh, I don't know, the base ingredient for the potion. It's the one that binds the potion together because it has all the properties that you want. So any other ingredients that you have can have one of the properties and it'll still build it. Um, so Canis Root is growable. You can grow it in your garden. Um, juniper, juniper berries also are growable. And uh, that is the Fortify Marksman uh, portion of the potion. And the other ingredient that you would want would be uh, Hanging Moss. So if we go to Fortify One Hand... Uh, hanging moss is not actually technically growable, but it, it is one of the most common ingredients out there. I think according to the wiki, um, there's like 1,500 wild samples out there. It's also fairly easy to get just from selling or just from uh, purchasing it. Um, and uh, there are a few other ingredients that also have the fortify one hand. But hanging moss, just off the top of my head, is the best way to do it. And uh, yeah, there you go. Bows and one-handed. So if your character is an archer that also uses one hand, if you're a sneaky thief type, this is perfect for you. It boosts all of your combat abilities in one nice little potion. Uh, my, by the way, if, in case you guys were wondering, my, my values are actually a little low here. Um, let me go ahead and switch to my actual set of crafting equipment. I have some really nice uh, crafting equipment here. So you just give me one minute. This is Sky UI, by the way, uh, inventory management mod that I use. It's very nice. Uh, anyway, 
I have my actual crafting equipment on right now. If I uh, do the same potion, you'll see the effects are significantly better. So if you are serious about um, alchemy, I would definitely recommend leveling enchanting because not only will the alchemy perks themselves offer up better potions, but the enchanting perks, uh, as you can as you can see, it's a 130% damage uh, increase instead of 60% damage increase because I have a solid set of enchanted uh, gear that boosts my alchemy. I mean, even if you don't have enchanting, you can find you know you can find uh, material or. Uh, uh, jewelry and equipment on the vendors uh, or just as random drops that will boost your alchemy as well so keep an eye out for that if you don't feel like leveling up enchanting it's certainly uh, not a bad thing so there you go bows and one-handed 130% uh, with my current set of gear obviously it's a significantly uh, large damage boost um, with these potions in addition to my uh, my really nice set of uh, blacksmith gear that I've made, like gear that I've made with blacksmithing, I can actually like almost one shot most dragons and other mobs in the game with my weapons. It's pretty ridiculous. So this this damage potion boost is is pretty nice. Um, now if you're more inclined to do uh, two-handed weapons, um, the potion you were looking for, and this one I believe has uh, just these three particular ingredients. It's a little strange but it's kind of a nice little combination here. If you go for a dragon's tongue, and all three of these ingredients are growable, uh, fly amanita, and mora tapinella. Uh, and you might not actually be able to read that, but uh, it says uh, stamina regen is increased by 162% for 300 seconds. Two-handed weapons do 130% more damage. Illusion spells are 130% stronger and resist 97% of fire. Um, so it's kind of a strange combination. It's mostly what I would say a two-handed uh, slash illusion potion with a few nice little riders. Stamina regen is, you know, it's useful for sure if you're a two-handed weapon user. Um, and the fire resist is always a bonus. Um, and we'll be going into resist potions here in a minute. Um, but uh, for two-handed weapon users, um, that's the way to go. Now, obviously, there are some other ways to deal damage to your opponents. For example, conjuration magic. Uh, can allow you to summon some nice things. Destruction magic, of course, is very straightforward for damage, but in my experimenting, I was unable to find any cool combination potions uh, involving those two, with one exception, which we'll get to a little bit later. Um, so if you guys have any suggestions for potions that will boost any other uh, damage attributes or anything like that, yeah, uh, I'd love to hear them. I'd love to start a discussion about that. Uh, so that's, a, that's about it for uh, damage potions. Let's move on to resists. Now, resist potions are um, very, very handy. Um, that being said, I actually have found that a pure uh, resist magic potion isn't quite as useful as you might think because um, all of the magic spells that I've encountered have a specific element. And resist magic by itself, if I just whip two of these things up, it's only 32% uh, with my gear. And that's with some really, really insanely good gear. Um, whereas if you go for a specific element, for example, shock here, I guess, uh, 97% is actually above the cap. It's more than is even possible to gain as a resist. Um, now if your equipment isn't, equipment isn't, maybe isn't good, as good as, and a single potion won't cut it, you can always, uh, use resist magic potions. Um, however, just for the sake of completionism or whatever you want to call it, um, I do have a potion that I did make that I think is fairly decent depending on your character setup. If you take uh, Bleeding Crown and Tundra Cotton, it actually gives you blocking and resist magic. Uh, and both of these uh, ingredients are renewable. They are growable in your house. Um, and it also leaves you some options for a third ingredient. Um, for example, let me go to the master list here. If you pick a uh, Dragon's Tongue with this uh, pair, it adds Fortify Haggle. If you want to make some more cash, just as a, a nice little rider. Or if you switch it up to either uh, Jazz Bay Grapes or Red Mountain Flower, either of these, and they are both renewable as well. We'll just show you the Jazz Bay Grapes. It gives you um, Fortify Magicka. So a nice little boost to your Magicka stat. If you, uh, you know, maybe if you're not really somebody who uses a ton of magic but would like to have a little bit extra. Um, you could use that as a as a simple writer. So nice versatile little potion uh, for a defensive-minded character. If you use a shield, 
uh, or otherwise just block often with a two-hander or what have you. Uh, so block, fortify block, resist magic, and uh, either fortify magicka or fortify barter are available for those. As far as the primary elements go, fire, shock, and frost, those are the three you're going to really be dealing with the most. Poison is definitely present. It's annoying, but it's not something that's going to kill you very, very quickly in my experience. So fire, shock, and frost are really the big ones. Um, and actually, there is a potion you can create that will cover all three of those. Um, snowberries are like the best resist. Uh, potion ingredient because they actually cover all three elements by themselves fire frost and shock which is pretty ridiculous but unfortunately it's not easy to pair them up with anything else um, in that sort of quantity to get all three the only ingredient that facilitates a potion that covers all three is a hawk beak it's the only other ingredient that I found that has two of the main elements as well meaning that if you combine the snowberries uh, a hawk beak, and then a uh, third ingredient, my problem. as my in-game wife interrupts me. <laughs> um, uh, in this case, Fly Amanita. Um, this actually gives you all three resists in one potion. Um, hawk beaks are uh, fairly hard to get. They're kind of annoying. I believe you might be able to vendor them, but usually you actually have to kill hawks to get them. Like You have to look up in the sky, find a bird, and then shoot it out of the sky with either a bow or magic or... I don't know, giving it a nasty stare or something. Um, but still, a handy potion to have if you're jumping into an enclave of mages for 60 seconds. This will make you nearly magic invulnerable. Pretty awesome. And uh, even so, if you want to spend a few more fancy ingredients, if you switch out the Fly Amanita for Mud Crab Chitin, um, not only do you get all three resists, but you also get 203 stamina back with my uh, current setup. So all three primary element resists and restore stamina in one potion with Snowberries, Hawkbeak, and Mudcrab Chitin. Um, if you keep the Mudcrab Chitin and the Snowberries and switch out the Hawkbeak, if I can find that, whoop, whoop, whoop. Hawkbeak for uh, a Thistle Branch. You get uh, resist poison, frost, and fire. So instead of shock, you would get uh, resist po uh, resist poison. Now, unfortunately, you lose the uh, restore stamina, but you know, um, for a good all-purpose uh, resistance potion, it's uh, it's not too bad. Um, what I have found for my own general use, I do like having the resist poison around. I also like things to be nice, simple, and clear and clean. Um, so one thing you can do is um, if you use the thistle branch, which is uh, frost and poison, and pair it up with pretty much anything you want um, that does those ingredients. There are a ton of ingredients that match frost and poison. Uh, we know snowberries uh, covers the frost, so we can select that. And uh, if we go to resist poison, um, I'm sure we'll find plenty of ingredients there. Uh, like, for example... Uh, grass pods are renewable. There we go. Uh, poison and frost. Very simple. And then you can use the snowberries to make yourself a resist fire and shock. So with uh, two different potions, resist fire and shock, and resist poison and frost, you'll have all of your bases covered for all of the attacks you'll get of any kind of element. Um, and actually, this design in particular has a nice little interesting um, uh, side ability to it. If you uh, replace the grass plot, uh, uh, excuse me, if you replace the grass pod, with uh, slaughterfish scales, if I could find those slaughterfish scales, um, you get frost and heavy armor. So that's kind of interesting. Um, can give you um, the ability to resist to have heavy armor because heavy armor is another one of those abilities that's kind of hard to pick up, um, unfortunately. So keep an eye out for that. You never know uh, what you may find uh, with all these sorts of. Uh, Fortify potions. Uh, fortify heavy and fortify light are um, both fairly difficult to get by themselves or in combination with something else that's useful. Um, so I'm not going to really cover that too much more. But um, the big ingredients in summary are snowberries, which resist all three of the primary ingredients. The hawk beak, uh, or sorry, primary elements. The hawk beak, which covers frost and shock, and uh, thistle branch, which covers. Um, 
frost and poison. So plenty of options there. Again, if this uh, if this seems a little too overwhelming to you know sort of listen to all these different things, if you want to skip the video, it's totally cool. Uh, down in the description will be a link to my website where I list all of these potions in detail. Um, if you want to have it as a nice reference, I certainly wouldn't blame you. I mean, I have a text file open with all these uh, all the time when I'm doing my alchemy personally. So. Um, uh, to finish off the video, we're going to switch over to take a look at some poisons, some very useful poisons. Alright, in subject to poisons, I've definitely found poisons to be quite useful. The amount of damage they do is pretty good. If you're not um, invested too heavily into smithing, uh, using poisons to supplement your damage will definitely be big. Um, but, I mean, to be quite frank, the amount of damage uh, that you get from having uh, well... Um, enhanced smithing uh, based gear is way higher than you'd ever see with poisons. However, there are still some really, really handy poisons. Uh, they do give you some effects that you can't otherwise get. Uh, for example, if you use Imp Stool, which does, uh, which has, you know, damage health and lingering damage health and paralysis, quite a good uh, ingredient for poisons. If you combine that with a Mora Tapanella and either a Canis Root or Swamp Fungal Pod, either one will work. We'll just go for a Swamp Fungal Pod. Bam! You get a paralysis poison, which in my case lasts for 32 seconds. Quite a phenomenal amount of time. Um, and also ca causes 32 points of poison damage uh, over 10, or four, four 10 seconds, meaning 320 points of poison damage total. Um, so a very large amount of damage um, and a very long paralysis. So if you enter into a room, you have a bow, if you have the perk that allows your poisons to affect two targets, this poison will do a good amount of damage to two different targets, also incapacitating them for the duration of a fairly decent uh, length fight. Um, so this is another reason to have really good equipment to boost your alchemy. But even before that, I mean, even a five-second paralysis or a you know eight-second paralysis, what have you, is very handy for most fights. It'll definitely knock out uh, a lot of uh, uh, potential for getting swarmed by a large quantity of nasties. Um, as far as uh, more pure damage potions, uh, poisons go, uh, Death Bell is one of the best ingredients to use because it actually has a higher damage health modifier. It's, uh, I think, usually 50% stronger than most other um, types of uh, poison ingredients that you have. So uh, with the Death Bell and Giant Lichen, this provides a uh, poison of weakness to poison. Um, which by itself isn't so useful because you obviously aren't going to be necessarily doing any poison damage unless you actually have anything else along with it. Um, but I found a few different ingredients are good for this. Um, Nightshade isn't too bad and it's also uh, easily renewable, just adding simply the damage uh, output. Uh, the aforementioned Imp Stool also adds the damage. Uh, but the big one here, if you can afford it, is Skeever Tail because Skeever Tail actually has... Um, not only uh, damage health, but ravage health, which are kind of the same thing. Um, but it's two, two effects that do more or less the same thing. So with this poison at this level, you're doing uh, 65 plus 97 damage. So 162 damage um, before the weakness is applied. Quite a bit. Quite a bit of damage indeed. And uh, one last poison I want to show off as well. Uh, also uses the Nightshade and the Death Bell. Um, if I can go grab those, Death Bell and Nightshade. And one more ingredient, uh, the Blue Mountain Flower. If I could find that, if I could remember what direction the alphabet was. There we go. Um, does Magicka, uh, well not Magicka damage, but it, it decreases their Magicka regen by 100% for a very long time at this level. And even at lower levels, it's pretty good. So... Against mages, uh, I mean, yeah, you could paralyze them, but, you know, if you want to give them a fighting chance at least to make them, you know, sit there and slap you with their dagger or whatever weapon mages use, um, this is a good one to do. And uh, if you switch out the Blue Mountain Flower for a chicken egg, hawk's eggs work as well, um, you also get a stamina drain. Uh, so a drain of stamina and uh, decreased magicka regen and just straight up damage. So a very, very good poison to use against mages um, and has certainly a, uh, a large number of, uh, of uses. Um, oh, actually, wow, I forgot about uh, healing potions and restorative potions of those sorts. Wow, 
Almost forgot. Okay, be back with that. Okay, uh, health potions. Obviously, very important. Most people will probably, you know, drink those pretty religiously if you don't have restorative magic or your magic is otherwise tied up or you just feel like, you know, using healing potions. Uh, one of the best ones to do, you know, I probably should be using this sidebar here, um, is wheat and blue mountain flour. Two renewable ingredients. And look at that. With just two ingredients, you have a healing and... Um, and health increasing potion. So 330, wow, 333 points of, of healing, essentially, uh, done with just two ingredients that are very common, very easily planted. I hate this NPC. Why did I ever get married? Guys don't ever get married. Or girls don't ever get married. Your wife will just incessantly bug you about the assassination mission that you did for her. Or just don't assassinate people. One of those two will work. Um, anyway, <clears throat> blue mountain flower and wheat is a makes for a, quite a nice healing potion. If you are the magical type, you can actually add in lavender. And that gets you fortify conjuration, making your conjuration spells last, in my case, 162% longer for 60 seconds. Which kind of doesn't really make much sense. I mean, I guess it does, but... It's like, I will make this last 162% longer, but only for 60 seconds. Anyway, um, if you want a nice little writer with a renewable resource, if you are a conjurer, go for it. No harm in that. Um, also, if you are a smith, which I am, you can use the blue mountain flower again. Switch out the wheat for a glowing mushroom. Glowing mushroom and use blister wart again. All three of these ingredients are growable and that gives you fortify smithing So health increase restore health and fortify smithing all in one potion Quite handy really To have all those things, you know all those in one inventory spot in one You know unit of weight since all these potions weigh half of a um, Generic fantasy weight unit whatever you want to call it I don't know. Uh, if you're a mage type, if you're the magical type, you use the red mountain flower. It's kind of weird. Magicka is red, but health is blue. Isn't that kind of backwards? Oh, well. The red mountain flower, if you combine this with a glowing mushroom and a ectoplasm, a little expensive... The ectoplasm is kind of a rare ingredient, but I, ha I feel like I have to mention this potion because it is pretty nice. This gets you uh, Fortified Destruction. One of the few potion co uh, concepts that will actually allow that. Fortified Destruction. In addition to Magicka Increase and Restoring Your Magicka. So if you're in the middle of a fight and you need to kick it up a notch, chug one of these bad boys. Not only will your spells be doing more damage, but you'll be refueled, ready to go to drop some serious pain. On some fools who are usually want to have serious pain dropped on them. Uh, let's go ahead and show you guys another potion. Red Mountain Flower. Again, kind of be in the base since it has both Restore and Fortify uh, Magicka. If you use Jazz Bay Grapes. Uh, and then you're actually offered uh, quite a few different choices for this one. Uh, which gives you Regen, uh, Regenerate Magicka. Regenerate Magicka. Um, I think there's like four different ingredients. Pretty much all, actually most of these ingredients will work. I think dro Dwarven Oil, yeah, gives you faster Magicka regen, increased Magicka, and restore Magicka. So Dwarven Oil, I think Fire Salts, yes, not garlic. Fire Salts, Moon Sugar, Taproot. Uh, so yeah, four different ingredients you can combine with the Jazz Bay Grapes and Red Mountain Flour to get you like the ultimate in Magicka potions. For the most part. So, uh, so there you go. Plenty of options there. Uh, another little note here. Unfortunately, stamina. Um, you can very easily make, you know, regenerate stamina potions or fortify stamina potions or restore stamina potions. But there's no real easy way to get uh, a renewable source of those types of potions. And I've never really found restore stamina to be that useful. I mean, there's always the... Um, uh, the restoration perk that allows you to restore your stamina whenever you heal yourself and and you kind of just have enough 
stamina potions in my experience from just general adventuring. But if you want to build some, uh, the ingredients that you can look out for are large antlers, which have restore stamina and fortify stamina, as well as torch bug, torch bug thoraxes. Um, either of these can be used as sort of the basis for a stamina regenerating potion for fortify and restore. If you want actual stamina regen, the only uh, base ingredient for that, for a combination potion again, is bees, which are fairly common. Uh, they offer up restore stamina and regenerate stamina. Um, and then whatever, you know, sub ingredients you want to use, as you can see, there's plenty of them for restore stamina. I mean, purple mountain flowers, renewable, um, you know, and so on. Um, so plenty of options for potions. I, uh, you know, th this, this video ended up being a little bit more, uh, long winded than I thought it was going to be. I think it's my new mic. I just like talking into this thing. It's pretty awesome. Uh, but hopefully it was useful again. I mean, you know, if you take anything away from this, it's, uh, it's to try to help you to get a little bit more comfortable with alchemy and all of its uses, as well as, uh, just to show off some of my favorite potion types. You know, the, the, I found the restore health, uh, potions to be really, really useful. The resist potions and definitely the damage potion, the one that boosts the, uh, one hand and archery that fit perfectly in line with my character and, uh, was a significant damage boost. Quite, quite nice indeed. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, again, if you have any uh, suggestions for potion ideas for me, something that I may not have covered. This was not intended to be exhaustive, but I'm always open to listening to what you guys have to say as far as uh, good potion ideas um, and all that stuff go. So uh, leave a comment below and uh, have fun adventuring in Skyrim. See you around.